Hello and welcome to this video on Galileo thermometers. A weird and somewhat obscure table decoration now, but previously a surprisingly good indicator of temperature. The thermometer is distinct from what you would see in most applications nowadays, or even in the last 100 years. It has no ethanol or mercury to drive the change but is instead based on the change in temperature and consequential volume of water. The device was invented in the Accademia del Cimento of Florence. It was first reported in 1666. The report was then translated to English in 1784. It was not made by Galileo, but is partially attributed to one of his direct students Torricelli. The outer part of the device is filled with rectified spirits. You and I know this as ethanol. Small glass bubbles are then added as a sort of weight, and the weight of each is adjusted by grinding the surface back. These bubbles then have a small amount of liquid added to them, and are sealed. The tube itself then has itself sealed with a small amount of space left at the top. This allows for liquid expansion. Without this, the density change could not be possible. Some modern versions do away with the bulb design as its basis, but retain it for aesthetic purposes. Instead, attached to each bulb is a small metal tag that does several things. One is that it indicates the temperature. You no longer need to memorize the color corresponding to a temperature. Then, they will also add a specific weight to this tag. That weight makes up what used to be the purpose of the bubble. These weights are designed to specifically correspond to that temperature and acts as a counterweight to the buoyancy of the water. The basic idea is that as the air becomes warmer, the temperature of the water changes. If the temperature goes up, the water becomes less dense. As the water becomes cooler, it becomes more dense. As it either expands or contracts, the density changes. There is a corresponding weight at which any one of the bubbles will float and others will sink that directly relates to that buoyancy and temperature. The device is curious in the way it works and is similar to hydrometers in that respect. The Galileo thermometer works on the principle of buoyancy, floating or sinking. Humans are largely water, which is why we float. This is the only factor that determines whether or not the bubbles will rise or fall. This is why the device works so well. As things get heavier, they will sink. If the temperature increases and the density decreases, the heaviest items will fall out of suspension first. This is why your heaviest tag that corresponds to the lowest temperature will fall out of suspension first. The bubble that sinks the most indicates the approximate current temperature, but that rule alone is not necessarily accurate. Anything that is resting on other bubbles isn't at all floating, therefore you must read from the lowest free floating bubble. In the example seen here, the four at the bottom have long since stopped making any reading, whereas the 24 degrees centigrade is reading. The nature of this design does make it somewhat difficult to account for wide temperature ranges, which is why you will often find they read between 10 and 15 degrees. You might think that looking at this, the tube or glass bubbles change in size, but in this case, glass is a great conductor of energy but does not retain it well enough to change in comparison to the water volume. 
This means the density of the glass does not change relative to the liquid around it. This means the most significant contributor to the variation and predictive ability of this device is the movement of energy and therefore temperature from the outside environment to the water. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.